goes against all nonsense. Absolutely. What about a fourteen year old kid that gets put on a train to London and left on her own because her parents want to be in the sea orb and she doesn't. <coughs> and she just gets dumped in London. And ends up living a life a of drug prostitution well, and drug addiction. Well, she was a DB to start with, right? Oh yeah, that's what it was. The fact what that she had no training in life, except the cadet org at St. Hill, didn't really prepare her for life conditions. on the streets of London. That's Louise Cronin. Oh, you know Louise Cronin? He knows Louise Cronin. You know Louise Cronin? And we have her going out with John Atac now, by the way. Holy cow, no. What a twist of fate that is. Louise Cronin, Cronin got it's declared, did you know that? Do you know why she got declared? Because she was my friend. Isn't that pathetic? She was declared for being my friend. She's a really evil lesbian. <laughs> Do you know what happened to her sister when she was 14? She was kicked out of the Sea Org and put on a train to London at 14 years old. She became a prostitute and lived on the streets. Nice work. Nice work, Scientology. Her youngest, her little brother died when he was in the Cadet Org. They took him to the beach and he drowned. And they put it on her and they blamed her. She was nice eight work. years old. Nice work, Scientology. But you've heard it all it before. It doesn't matter. Fair game, right? Jesus Christ, damn it! You're going to die of cancer before the night is out. <laughs> you know, fair game was cancelled. Oh six, wait, it wasn't cancelled. Yeah. The policy on fair game wasn't cancelled. No. That's what it is, isn't it? Fourteen-year-olds. Mentioning fair the game. words was cancelled. Unborn babies are fair game. Who else is fair game? Babies. Anybody who doesn't like Scientology anymore, yeah. anybody who's not getting wins out of Scientology, they're fair game. It's not a lie, anybody it's an acceptable truth. Anybody who's a kid doesn't want to do Scientology. Really. What would that be? If you the parents get prepared for kids, then you're not sure. I need a bit of Kelly's They blew, of course. They just have to disconnect, right? Well, not important, they blew, of course, years ago. Those same rules don't really apply to Dublin Mission. You're supposed no. to be against homosexuals. Yes, you had a yet you had a lesbian couple on course when I was there. Ooh. You know, and that le one of the lesbians well, is ex Seorg. Andrea, ex ex Seorg, yeah. Andrea. And she's ex Seorg. Andrea too, yeah. But the difference is on her family and such. So it's like, yeah. I really want to Turn a blind them. eye because it's too much of a money making family. God love it, she's cute. Yeah. They promised to cure homosexuality. Yeah, I know. Which is strange because it's not actually a disease. What but does they also claim? Uh, they were religious bigots, but they'd have to be a religion, but yeah. it to be true. And they think we hate them. I don't hate them. I hate abortions. And they still tell people, they still tell people what the church published about Anonymous in February 2008, and it's just not true. Yeah, it's not true. We're not even anonymous. Absolutely not true. We, we were never anonymous. I was never the leader of Anonymous, so where you got that from, I have no idea. They but hey, you believe what you like. Of course, you're right. Your security network has all the facts, doesn't it? They believe the ex COOSA was really an SP. That ex OTs that are against the church were really SPs. Sure. That the ex. Sure. The, the two right hand men of David Miscavige were really SPs, Mike and Marty. That what you do in that building there is more beneficial to mankind than the entirety of Trinity College. Do you really yeah. believe that? Do you know how many OTs have made it all the way up the bridge to OT? How many, how many SPs have made it all the way up the bridge to OT? How many is it? Loads. You're a PTSSP. Every single, I, everybody who left. Actually, do you, know, do you know what they told Mike Knott when Mike Knott got back in calm with me? I'll what? use Scientology so they understand me. They told Mike Knott that OT5 turned me into an SP. Because <laughs> he said, how can she get all the way up to OT5 and be an SP? And they said, how they explained it was, well, what happened was Sam must have hit, hit this implant that lots of OTs hit uh, when they get to OT5 yeah. that turn them into SPs. Well, well, Scientology turns you into SPs. That's what they told Mike Knott. Is Ask that him. the old common sense implant? So that's what yeah. they told Mike Knott, because he said it's how, because Mike was going to meet me for coffee in London. Yeah. But then what happened was he got a cold. <laughs> and that would be your fault, yeah. So, ah. so then he believed that OT5 would turn me into an SP and told me Excellent. That's the story. That's how they explain how OTs can turn into SPs. So how come these guys aren't coughing and sneezing and falling over and twisting their legs and breaking their arms bullshit. and things? No, they can, con well, Dermot can't confront us. His tears keep going out. He's confronting beer with cigarette stuff. At the risk of sounding rude, what TRs? He's got TRs. He's just, he's just, he just thinks you're an SP, so he's a bit scared of you. He's a bit scared. I don't know what he's scared of. What it, what well, I'll tell you what they're scared of. They're scared of confront and they're scared of communication. No, they're 
turn up because when they're talking to, when they're regging somebody, Hi, boys. or they're telling somebody to abort their child, <coughs> their tiaras are in there. Or they're telling somebody to mortgage their house. Or they're sitting in a courtroom opposite their twin. So his tiaras are now, he just can't confront people that he's been told are SP. What if you are making a big mistake? Just what if? That means you spent all those years and all that money, all those words. Okay. <clears throat> He's with his mate. He's got one. He's not an SP. See, SPs don't have to have friends who are other SPs. We have real people as friends. I think Michael's trying to do something to me. He keeps looking at me. I think he's trying to do some TR thing. No, he's trying to ignore you, not his you. He's uh, not really interested in anything not you is. to say. Not he is. Not is. Yeah. He thinks you're insane or yeah. he thinks you're an SP or whatever. Okay, well you not is me and continue to alter is the way things really are. And congratulations and good luck with that. Actually, I don't know. I think he's going to make his own mind up. Well, I hope he does. I hope they both do, you know. The information's out there. Look. I don't know. They all do eventually. <clears throat> they get to this point where they go, what the fuck is the worst that could happen to me if I look? Yeah. You know what it was for me? Why is it so wrong to read this book you know or look at this? You know what it was for this? me? It was like, how can these... I had the same question as Mike Knott, but Mike Knott hasn't quite made it yet. Mike right. Knott said, how can all these ex suit members and SPs all suddenly be SPs? Right. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, these that's people, what I want to know. These are people that... Have you ever had somebody you really, really liked that was so yeah. cool and sealed and then you hear that yeah. and yeah, you're yeah. like, what the fuck? It's hard to swallow. How could every single person who was at St. Hill with L. Ron Hubbard in the 1960s be an SP? Of his personal it's not possible. Declared. It's not possible. The first clears were all SP declared. 98 of the first, what, no, 98 percent of the first. How, how does it work? Yeah. How does it even work? Do you know who the real SP in Scientology is? David Miscavige. Speak to his auditors from when he was like 12 years old. Some you know, he guy. He beat up his first PC on a his guy. membership at St. Helly beat up his PC. Backed. Documented on the An auditor email. brought his folder he back. Banned from auditing. He brought the folder back into the room, dumped it on the table and says, I'm not auditing that guy, he's a fucking SP. Scavage was banned from auditing as a dangerous auditor. A dangerous artist. You should know that story. Do you know the story? Or he hit his PC. He his PC. And was declared a dangerous artist. That's what's running your organization. A dangerous artist. Declared dangerous artist. Yep. Banned from the BC at 14. Did you meet David Miscavige yourself? Because I've not heard anything really good about people who've met him, for real. You know his wife's decided, don't you, Shelley? You know what happened? Shelley told Jan that she was worried that Scavage was having a type 3 meltdown, breakdown. So he had a locked up with CST with Annie Logan. Annie Logan was Jim Logan's wife. She was the one that was one of the people who was with Elrond Hubbard when he died. Scavage had nothing to do with it. He didn't know it. None of the shit was left in the scavenge. Yeah, oh, that's one. Left in that broker, Nanny Broker. <coughs> who died of cancer a couple of years she ago. She did, and they didn't tell her family. That was nice. Because they didn't want Annie telling anybody about David and Scavage. And what LRH, and the fact that LRH... Dermot should hear this. Annie, LRH had asked Annie and Pat Broker to run the church. If David Miscavige was an SP, just if, how would you deal with the situation? What would you do? What could you do? Thank you. 
cannot will all your belongings to the church. It's illegal. It belongs to your family. Miscavige and Marty Rathbone took 10 people and bullied Mary Sue into signing everything over. That's truth. Yep. Marty told me that he was in tears about what they did to Mary Sue. She died broken hearted because he also prevented her from seeing her husband, L. Ron Mary Hubbard. Mary Sue asked David Miscavige if LRH said anything about her before he died. He grinned and said no. Marty and told me that Marty was right there. And that was a lie. So Mary Sue died alone of a broken heart thinking her husband had abandoned her when she went to prison for him. I happen to know what David Miscavige's biggest ever cognition in life was. Power is assumed. It's by how many people listen to you. And it depends on how many people listen to you. So that's how David Miscavige took over the church. He bullied Mary Sue into signing everything over to him. He said, I'm here with the CMO. We're in charge now. We've taken out Pat Broker and Annie Broker. We're the bosses now. And forced Mary Sue to sign over all the finances, all the properties, all the withholdings that by law, if you know anything about probate law in the States, you will know the family, the family went to court to fight it. You and, but Mary Sue signed it over. You will know that you are not allowed to sign over, that the wife is entitled to your property and your money when you die. You are not allowed to sign it away by law. Your wife is entitled to it. Your family is entitled to it. So when you hear this lie from Miscavige that L. Ron Hubbard left everything to the church, he couldn't even do that legally. It's impossible. Even and do you know what else? You can't do it. It's against, it's illegal. Can I add something to that? Do you know that he was found with Vistaril in his system? Vistaril is a psychiatric drug given to people who are raving given mad. given to him by Denk under Miscavige's orders. It's in the death, it's in the autopsy. Go online, look at the autopsy. Fuck it. Also, go to, actual, go to Hammett and ask for the records yourself. And have here's another thing, Sam. Death records, Sam, may autopsy, I? Which they tried to prevent. May I? Um, another thing is the type of stroke he has, he had, actually makes you incapable of speech. And yet, two days before he died, he changed his will. How did he manage that when he was incapable of speaking? I'll hold the pen. I'll hold your hand and just. Go on, it's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll guide your hands. And then they whisked him off quietly. Incinerated After the corpse. They couldn't get away with the autopsy. Incinerated him as fast as they could. Throw it through his ashes in the sea and then told the Scientologist the bullshit story and said, "Don't breathe. He's moved on to find another body. Don't breathe. Did you see? No, you wouldn't have seen." No, they so won't have seen it. He died alone. <clears throat> Have you seen the photos of him in later years? Do you ever wonder why you only see pictures of him in the 60s and 70s? Really? Because he was a dreadful old man with long hair and wicked fingernails. He was left to die. He was ignored. Miscavige was heard saying the old man's got to go right before he died. The old man has got to go. And there is the basis, there's the basis of your world shaking religion that's going to change the world and save everybody, <coughs> not. Which doesn't work because they haven't said how it works yet. Scavage only wants one thing and that's your money, your time. Rides his bikes with Tom. With Tom, that he got a your IS, IS donation. Oh yeah. He's a bike. He's got like six cars, and they they won't let you buy a car because it's out ethics because you should be giving money to them. This guy has got like six B, six high class cars, motorbikes. Do you know that policy? Money. What your donations pay for? I should do a rewrite. What your donations yeah. really pay he has for? All of his
<laughs> there won't be an ideal hog here. And the scavengers are going to give you any. Because hell, no, hell knows, he's got to have, he's got to have his custom-made shoes in Harley Street. That's where he gets his shoes made. <clears throat> Thousands of pounds for a pair of shoes. Aye. Do you know how many weights are happening? Get out! Get out with one pair of David Miscavige's shoes? A lot. Oh my god, you could probably renovate your whole org just on what Miscavige pays on a pair of shoes. Not to mention the shirts. You're living the life of Riley and you're paying for it, and that's all, that's all he gives a shit about. So tonight when you're lying in bed, ask yourself, how do I use Scientology in my life? How do I do that? What do I actually do that improves my life when I use Scientology? What do I do? I what do money. I fucking do? I don't have more money. Because guess what? No one's ever been able to answer that question. Ever. And that's pretty strange, considering you think you use it in your life to improve it. All we want to know is how. Simple. <laughs> well, Simple. the question is, Because they oh, say it does. Really, you know, I've seen, I've seen people, I've seen people come up drugs. Big MU drugs there, centers. big MU there, massive yawn. Do you know, that is, you know, that is like. I've seen people come off drugs with cold do you turkey. Know the <clears throat> Can't hear you. <laughs> Yeah. It's just a bad habit. It is hard to come off drugs. It's actually hard to start smoking. I spoke to a heroin addict who actually said it was harder to stop smoking than it was to come off heroin. Now these two guys smoke. I quit so, smoking 12 years.